This summer, the world's oldest known whiskey is going under the hammer, a legendary bottle of Old Ingledew bourbon. If you want a chance at owning it you'll be able to put in a bid with Skinner Auctioneers between June 22nd through June 30th. Exactly how old is the liquid, itself? Well, nobody knows for sure since it comes from a time before modern labeling practices had been established. But scientific analysis affords a high degree of probability that it entered the glass sometime between 1763 and 1803. Pretty historic hooch, to be sure. Even more so when you consider its chain of custody. In a press release, Skinner Auctioneers states that the bourbon, which is estimated to sell for $20, 000 to $40, 000, was purchased by John Beerpoint Morgan, yes, that Morgan, during one of his frequent visits to Georgia in the late 1800s. At the time, it would have been stored in Damijon, a novular glass vessel usually measuring around 15 gallons in volume. Commercial bottling had only just begun in 1870 with Old Forester in Louisville, Kentucky. The practice had yet to become widespread. So, Morgan paid a visit to a specialty grocer in Law Grange to have several decanters worth of the liquid bottled. His son Jack eventually ended up with a portion of the stock, gifting it to personalities no less prominent than U.S. Presidents Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman. Another recipient was James Burns. While never occupying the Oval Office, he wasn't exactly a slouch, serving as congressman, senator, and Supreme Court justice before being tapped by FDR to join his cabinet for World War II. After the war, Burns returned to his home state of South Carolina where he was elected governor in 1951. Around this time he re-gifted Morgan's bottle to his close friend and drinking buddy, Francis Drake. But Drake and his progeny were scotch drinkers. So for three successive generations they kept a cork in it, sampling nary a sip. When it entered the hands of Skinner, the auction house was tasked with authenticating its lineage. For this, they turned to their resident fine spirits specialist, Joseph Hyman. He, very carefully, extracted a small sampling of the bourbon and submitted it to scientists at both the University of Georgia and the University of Glasgow for carbon-14 analysis. The results were met with wonder, a distillation date sometime between the Revolutionary War and the Whiskey Rebellion. I expected a date of roughly 1850, Hyman admits.